There are many ways to cut a log, determined ultimately by how the lumber will be used. Custom slabs are very popular, and dimensional lumber for building is also a good use of a sawmill. We'll look at both of those techniques. But first, let's look at quarter sawing a log. Uh, when we quarter saw a log, uh, what we're trying to do is to saw parallel to the wood rays. And the wood rays are cell tissue that radiate from the pith or the very center of the log on a radius out to the edge. They're not all continuous. Some come out and then more come out and then more come out and more come out because the log gets bigger and bigger. And if you look at the end of this log, it started to check a little bit here. And each one of those check marks will be right aside of a, adjacent to a wood ray. And you can see the, and right here's the pith and here's some more that are lined up with the pith. So what we're gonna to try to do is to saw a couple of boards right out of the center of this log that'll be perfectly quarter sawn. And we'll be uh, cotton parallel to these wood rays. And if we were to start up here, we would have plain or flat sawn lumber because the rays run perpendicular to the face of the board. And it's a totally different appearance in oak, particularly mm -hmm. uh, when you do that. And if you come down to this zone right here, these, and I cut a board right across there, uh, these rays are at 45 degree angle to the face of the board now. That's what's considered rift. Yep. And rift is just very straight grained material and the rays are cut kind of flat. You can see them if you know what you're looking at, but they're not the splashy sort of appearance that you would get from being down in here. Uh, so it looks like you took the, uh, after you made the cant, which is the squared out log, you took the top third off. Yeah, we had a pretty irregular log, so I was just trying to get rid of some of that and the butt flare off the end, yep. so we didn't have to saw through all of that, okay. and we could line up better. And then we, uh, once we got four very narrow faces on the log, uh, we went down to the center of it, lined up on that crack that was on the far end, yep. came up about three and a half inches, cut a piece of five quarter, then we cut a piece of eight quarter, and at the when we cut the eight quarter, we were dead on the pith, yep. which is exactly where we want to be. We cut another piece of eight quarter, another piece of five quarter. And so that all came out of the middle, it was pretty pretty, uh, uh, pretty good ray flack in all of it, I think. Mm -hmm. the, the logs kind of twisted around, yeah. so the, the ray flack goes in and out. It's not like a perfectly straight log. 
Uh, so then we took a third of the log, turned it up, started at yep. the very top, and uh, cut rift for about four or five pieces. Then we got down to the center of that piece and we're cutting quartered material, probably another four or five pieces yep. that, that you see here. Continuous and then the rest of it uh, will be uh, rift again. And then I understand there's another way to do it. Yeah, we'll actually, we could take that other piece and cut it in half and work the, the quarters of it back and forth. Okay. That's the more traditional way to do it. A little more labor intensive though. More labor intensive and you gotta be able to move it. Sure. I think when you're working around any power equipment, you have to be careful. Uh, you need eye protection, you need ear protection. I don't know if you saw it or not, but there was an undercut on that end of that log. And when I hit that, I didn't take time to knock it down. When I hit that, that piece actually flew back and did hit my glass. So it was a good thing I had my glasses on at that point. You need to watch for that. You need to watch for the log accidentally rolling off the carriage. I kept those, those arms up mm -hmm. because we got people around here and somebody could get back there and I could be working the log and the log could take a roll and you just don't know where they're gonna go, particularly when they're irregularly shaped like this one. I think the other thing to keep in mind too is that um, wet lumber is very heavy lumber and so when you're lifting and moving this stuff around, you wanna use your mechanical advantage as, as Absolutely, as you wanna slide it wherever possible. Uh, you wanna move half of it if you can and yeah. uh, twist the other half around. And, and get and, some young backs to help and, you too. And get, get some young bucks in here and, and we're in good shape. Yeah. All right, uh, so let's set up for the other quarter sawing and we'll, and we'll finish, this piece finish that too. Have those first couple boards at the top of that wedge mm -hmm. that are going to be more of a rift and kind of waste as you saw that very first cut. Yeah. But once you get closer to the center of the triangle, you're going to get some gorgeous figure and wraith wife there. That's beautiful. So uh, beyond you know cutting up hardwood for furniture making, you can also use your mill for making dimensional lumber. Yeah, for sure, especially unique pieces that are hard to find in a big box store or very expensive. It's a real way to cost save, um, especially if you're using that lumber for yourself as well. So sawing up thick stock like 4x4, 6x6s, as well sure. as bigger things like 2x8s and 2x10s, uh, milling your own lumber is a great way for uh, cost save. And also long pieces too. Yep, definitely yeah. long pieces. Those, those get pretty pricey at the big box store. Yes, they do, so, especially stock. So what are we going to do with this log here? Well, we're gonna turn this into some six by six blocking. Um, okay. So we've got one face open up and we'll rip that down to make some stickers later. 
but uh, we're going to just take some six inch wide cuts and then we're going to flip those on their side and square them up as again six by six blocking. This is a beefy 28 inch cottonwood mm -hmm. and we're excited to use the whole capacity of the LT15 wide here and uh, see what it can do. Great, let's do it. One of the really great things about having a smaller sawmill is it gives you some flexibility. You can work with less than ideal logs. Absolutely. And that's uh, sort of what happened here, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is a walnut log, walnut tree. Uh, it was a 24 inch DBH tree, which means 24 inches in diameter at four and a half feet above the ground. Okay. So that's pretty good size for a, a walnut log, walnut tree. Mm -hmm. And that's particularly important because these people that are interested in these slabs, 
they want a, some of them want a piece 36 or 48 inches wide. Well, that's probably not going to happen with walnut. It might happen with your redwood people, but, sure. but not our walnut people, probably. Uh, so what the next step down is to take two pieces and have a book match. Mm -hmm. But so two pieces that are 20 inches wide give you 40 inches for a table, more, more or less. And most of them are happy with that. They, they can live with that. Because the bigger and the wider the stuff, the more expensive it gets. Sure. So you've got to keep that in mind. So this particular tree was cut. It was the site of a blowdown uh, a year ago, uh, a year and a half ago at this point. And I knew it had damage in it, and I was afraid Mother Nature would take it down in pieces mm -hmm. rather than me taking it down in one piece. So I decided to cut the tree. And as you can see here, we've got a lot of uh, canker damage or something that's fairly unique to walnut. You don't see that in walnut very often. But that, that threw that butt log out of the veneer business for absolutely sure, and maybe even out of the saw log business. Sure. Although the back side of it was pretty good. Now we had two upper logs, which one of them's laying, part of it's laying right here, uh, which were good sound material. But we can take a look at this and kind of see what's happening here. So this was just a thin piece that was taken off. Uh, I kind of like, I think and a lot of people do, probably cut a thin board or two off until you get some, some width. Sure. Uh, you sell some Oh, 10 to 16 inch wide slabs for benches and miscellaneous things. But the, the best part of the market to me are these thick wide slabs. So you're going after width. Anytime you can get width, you want to get it. So this is the first full eight quarter slab uh, going into the log. And uh, it's got a lot of little minor bark pockets in it. It's got a couple of openings. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to me, in the traditional lumber market, this is not a good board. But to a lot of people wanting slabs with character, it's ideal. Yeah. Uh, so that was the next one in. And then we're getting a little bit wider. We're down to about 18 inches on this piece. And you can see we got some openings in here, which people are going to uh, probably have to fill that to make it usable. But we still have uh, a pretty good width in that board. 18 inches isn't bad. And the prices are related to the width. This is a 20-inch piece, so it's probably one of the most valuable pieces in the log and in the tree. Uh, still got some openings. Mm -hmm. I mean, a few years ago, we'd have cut that board off to the, from, ripped it from here to here, cut that off and taken what we had left and put it in the standard lumber market. But it wouldn't have been worth $420. Of course, I haven't sold it yet for $420 <laughs> neither, but I'm, I'm starting. And this would be the next piece down in the log. And you can see we got the pith, that crack right in the middle running through it. Mm -hmm. So that identifies it as the, the center cut in that log. So this is what would be called a book match. And a lot of people like doing that, particularly me. So you'd clean these two edges off and get a straight edge, mm -hmm. bring those two pieces together, glue them somehow. And you can see you got a book match. A place to look is down at that defect about three feet from the end. Sure. It's a match to that one over there. And it adds some nice character to the to the to the, to the wood, to the table, whatever you're trying to make. So, uh, so this was a log that was probably destined for the dump or the burn pile. Uh, great sawmill, Okay. I think, because of the top two logs. Sure. This particular log is kind of funky. Um, but, uh, so, so this, this funky log. Is what people want right now. That's what people want right now, yeah. 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 Um, and how much? How much have you sold from it, or how much is, is uh, We've sold out of the entire tree, 24-inch tree, what's got 400 board feet in it, maybe? Probably no more than that. We've made six, six sales, and about the gross income is about 2,400. And the tree's about half gone, not half gone yet. So that one tree is converted to four or $5,000 easily. It's walnut that's big, mm -hmm. which is not easy to get. So you need to bear that in mind. But that's probably the best that anybody could do. Now, if you look on the internet, <clears throat> you can find all sorts of prices on the internet. You find these slabs priced two and three times what these are on the internet. So, uh, but you are adding a lot of value to this. It is this a lot tree. of value added. Yeah. yeah, that tree probably in the woods. I'm just kind of guessing, two, three hundred dollars, yeah, maybe more, maybe a little more than that. That's a pretty so good it's return. A significant increase. Yeah. But you got to be able to cut the tree. You got to be able to move the tree. You got to be able to saw the tree. You got to be able to dry it. And a lot of slab wood that's being sold is just air dried stock. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be sorry for that, guaranteed.
Now, if we look one, one uh, just in case you think it's all easy, let's, let's look down here to another log. And uh, this was a uh, log that came from a land clearing operation. Beautiful, beautiful log, beautiful three logs in that tree and big. And you see what happened down here with this end checking. Yeah. Uh, so that's obviously hurt the value of the piece, but we still got six feet off of one end. And if we want to rip two pieces of eight quarter lumber out of it, we can still do it. So it still has considerable value uh, in it. Uh, without that deep check in there, deep crack split, I mean, this would be an absolutely perfect board. That would have been a veneer, mm -hmm. veneer cut on there for sure. Now, somebody might still take it that way and put a couple of butterflies in there and put some epoxy resin in there to fill that crack and think it's great. Yeah, love, love to do that as a woodworker. I would. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, can you help me out here? <laughs> <laughs> to keep milling lumber that beautiful, you need to make sure your sawmill is in good working order. In the next section, we'll look at sawmill blades and basic maintenance.